Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, it's going to be the tour on everything that I'm growing. I'm going to slowly walk through the garden, show you what I'm growing, talk a little bit about the time frames, help you out. Letting the grass grow in. This is going to be wonderful mulch and compost. But let's start right over here. These are a lot of flowers, perennial flowers, that I started in January and February inside. And they are all repotted up into the quart root pouches that I sell, different pots I'm repurposing. But this is a great way to save a lot of money. These are all perennials. Well, there's some annuals in here. But I'm going to, you know, plant up the whole homestead. Pennies a plant saves you a ton of money. Just wanted to show you what they look like after three months of, you know, starting them from seed. Foxglove, lupines, hollyhocks, uh, sea holly, balloon flower, and then some annual coleus in the back there. It's a great way to save money. The perennials will come back year after year. They're going to bring in pollinators to my garden. I highly recommend planting some flowers along with your vegetables. All right, let's walk over to the main garden. This is one section on my property where I grow flowers, you know, a little sitting area. Perennials, again, for those pollinators, good insects. But I also uh, throw in some herbs, uh, peas into containers. These are 22 gallon containers. They have bottoms, but there are holes in there. There's about 15 peas in there. You can plant them really closely together. Peas love soil that drains well. They can go out quickly into the garden when there's still frost around. The pea plants themselves can take a frost. The flowers and pods can't. But these have been in there for maybe that's 10 days worth of growth. So they're about ready to take off. But anywhere you can drop in peas, in the spring early into your containers that haven't you know uh, been refilled if you were growing annuals in them or if the perennials aren't up yet you can tuck peas in around them little tripod tp tripod will take care of them okay let's head over now to the main garden these are garden beds outside my garden i plant onions shallots garlic uh, leeks, things that deer won't normally eat in these beds and they tend to leave them alone. Some overwintering, uh, I believe that is kohlrabi, that will get pulled out. It's going to seed right now, but you can eat the buds. Some garlic. This will be all turned over to onions, really. The rosemary will stay in the back. Just real quick, these are the onions and leek seed starts that I started probably towards the end of January, beginning of February. They all look great. So I'll have plenty of onions to go out into this space. Just a side note, the bed right there in the middle got wire worms, which are those little meal worms that you feed to birds. They tend to love, from what I researched and people told me, shredded hardwoods. So there was a lot of shredded hardwood in there. So right now that bed was treated with neem oil. I'll talk more about that in a future video if it's effective. But basically put down a neem oil drench, soaked it into the soil. Hopefully that takes care of the wireworms. What they do is they dig into like your sweet potatoes, your garlic, um, your onions. It can kill off the plant or put holes in, you know, the root crop that you're growing in there. So it's really annoying, but I think that it will be okay. This, and you can still see the box right in here is, um, why did I forget it? Soft neck squash right from that box actually that I put in maybe two weeks ago. You can see how it sprouted up nicely. You can do soft necked garlic now in April, put it down about an inch or two, let it come up. It may not be, you know, huge garlic bulbs that form, but you're going to be able to get something that you're going to be able to use in the garden for sure. Redesigning this area that's shown in a walkthrough that I do talking about all the different kind of beds new gardeners can use. Potatoes are going to go in there. This is my no-dig garden, and it does have some fencing around here that does actually keep out the deer. What I put in here were potatoes. Now, I've been researching potatoes at length to really try and understand what's the best way to grow them. And maybe you can see that it says early potatoes. So in England, they call potatoes early ones, early twos, and I think um, they're main harvest potatoes. And that kind of translates to what we call them early mid and late season potatoes so what i'm going with is anything that is called an early or mid season potato hopefully i don't say tomato i'm sure i'll do that they are determinant which means you put in the potato sends up a stalk they send out one layer 
of potatoes, you harvest them. There are indeterminate varieties. They tend to be the late season potato that grows over 120, 130, 140 days, and they will send potatoes out along the whole stem. It gets confusing because it's hard to find out what is a, a determinate potato, what is an indeterminate. So anything early or mid, I'm just dropping in the potato about four to six inches deep. Could it consider it a determinate variety? Consider getting one layer of potatoes. I'll talk more about that in other videos. But what I'm doing here is because the early potatoes are going to take about 70 to 80 days to be ready. I'm growing parsley along the side. Up top there, I'm going to grow some peas. I have pak choy, radishes planted around the mound. These are all cool weather crops that will be ready within 45 to 70 days. So I'll be pulling them out while the potato greenery is growing up, but they'll be gone after I harvest. And this is just a way that I can maximize the space. Because if I wasn't planting extra stuff in here, I'm just waiting 70 days for the potatoes to mature. I think that it'll work. There's no reason why, why it wouldn't, but it is an experiment. Along there, right there, and along this whole base, I just dropped in more of the soft neck garlic and radishes on the other side. So radishes are great because they can uh, be ready in 25 to 40 days. They're not going to compete with the peppers, I mean, yeah, with the potatoes, but they will give you something you can harvest in all this space while you're waiting for the potatoes. Hope that makes sense. And I, I think, you know, when you look at a seed pack, everything says a quarter inch deep or two inches apart. I, I think that's just been passed on for generations and generations and generations. And it's really useless. I don't, I don't know what it does. Um, I encourage you to experiment because you can grow plants more closely together in the ground, in containers, in raised beds like this, and get a bigger harvest. We're not always waiting. The lettuce there, for instance, is spaced out to get bigger heads, but you're not always waiting for maximum growth in your leafy greens. You're picking them at different times. So go ahead and sometimes cram stuff next to each other. See what the difference is. If you do peas four inches apart or, you know, you make the rows only three inches apart and you put the seeds one inch apart, does it really matter? And I don't think it does. Three rows of peas. These are put in, oh, at least four weeks ago. They were covered and protected from the heart of frost we were getting. They're doing wonderfully. I'll be dropping in some sticks, four foot sticks along the center of these rows for them to trellis on and then they will fall over and grow up the fence. Peas do need to be trellised. Mixed in here are radishes. And they're doing okay. Of course, I put in potatoes. I started from seed way down there and the frost still got through the plastic that was here and killed them off. They're fragile. So potatoes, just so that you know, you can put them into the ground four to six inches deep while it's still freezing and frosting. But once the greenery breaks through the surface, if that's hit by a frost, it is going to die off, you know. So you want to time it that it's doing everything, the potato's doing everything it's supposed to do in the ground. When it breaks the surface, frost has gone in your area. You're going to have to protect it a little bit. Lettuces that I seed started, these went into here on the 28th of March. Today is April 7th. Arugula along there. Arugula sprouts up really fast. You know, I put it right next to each other. I don't space it out because I'm going to be cutting it while it's still small. And that went in on March 28th. So arugula really pops really quickly. That's sprouted in about seven or eight days. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm not spreading everything out this year throughout my garden. I used to just tuck stuff in different places. And it kind of got silly because, you know, you lose track of, of what you're growing. So right now this garden is the cool weather garden everything is in one place easy to tend easy to keep an eye on that is cilantro on the ground and along the edges that i seeded last fall cilantro can actually take a freeze and a frost it's a cool weather crop warm weather crop when it's cooler it tastes better it doesn't flower as quick once it gets warm it does flower pretty quickly in this space again on march 28th i put in beets, 
purple top turnips and you can see April 7th that the turnips already germinated they germinate really quickly too beets will be coming um, let's see I've got carrots in the back you know those are all cool crops that you can get into the ground now that's a rhubarb right there so this will be a really nice um, raised bed with beets turnips carrots and then rhubarb which people tell me that will take over the bed which is fine if this all becomes just a rhubarb bed over the years that's okay but right now I'm planting around it all these containers or all these raised beds have open bottoms by the way more peas that I put in that is some celery over here these are fire rings I talk about these a lot Bloomsdale spinach this went in on March 3rd April 7th again so about four or five weeks of growth two seeds per much more closely together than they say and it looks really healthy those are radishes on the outer part so you can tuck in a lot I love spinach so the other thing I'm doing is whatever I like I'm planting more of <laughs> makes sense I'm also not trying to plant everything in there is kale packed together that's maybe eight inches apart ten inches apart right in the center are collard greens so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine plants in there bottom open you can't do this with a sealed bottom the root system has to go into something to support the plant ag fabric I am not going to be spraying these with neem oil neem oil works I will use it when I need it but I want to spray less I want to enjoy the garden more so I kind of gave into this ghost floating through my garden um, for the season or until the crops are used up don't really like it but I'm kind of getting used to it but it's a balance do I want to spray every 10 to 14 days do I want to deal with the cabbage looper do I want to chase that white butterfly down with a tennis racket and look like a madman trying to kill them I don't want to so experimenting with ag fabric and what I did was instead of taking those I don't know how many I said six eight plants and putting them in a row like over there I concentrated them all into one space I'll keep them well fed and this way I don't have to put the ag fabric everywhere but I'm sort of saving space without the insects getting to them I should get a ton of leafy greens in that smaller space save on spraying and I can plant other things over there which I'll talk about when we get there so it'll be a win-win as long as I can get over looking at that monster there this is the 22 gallon container it has a bottom you saw the uh, cilantro over there so I seeded this about 12 days ago heavily seeded tons of cilantro I also let this totally flower because it brings in beneficial insects and pollinators parsley Butterflies, the good butterflies, at least that I like, love it. They will come and lay eggs on there. Garlic from last year. This is a hard neck garlic. This is just a pail, has a bottom in it. We'll wait for this to brown out and fall over in later June and see what we get garlic wise. Here's a space, one of my frame beds. It is a raised bed, but I call it a frame bed because it's just a lower edge and it's more framing and putting all the resources into one place than it is really raising it you know to 12 to 24 inches high more lettuce what do we have in there these are Roxanne radishes that were planted on March 29th so that's nine days of growth they've already popped up arugula over there too you don't want to put down a thousand radishes all in the same day because then you could have to eat a thousand radishes within a few day span so every two weeks after they pop up wait two weeks put down some more radishes and this way you'll have a continuous supply of radishes coming in over the season rather than having to eat them all at once this is a space that's getting transitioned over this is uh, Brussels sprouts that overwintered eating the greens and the sprouts on there but temporarily just put in a red romaine lettuce that will uh, be done within I don't know four or five weeks and I'll be putting beans along here so all this green will be coming out these are plants that overwintered here is where I used to do a whole row of kale I have potatoes in there I told you I'm doing the big potato experiment this year 
the early variety so that I just drop the potatoes in. I'll let them go. I'm not going to plant anything on top of those. I want to see how they do. Collards, cabbage, broccoli. I'm going to grow more of the broccoli and cauliflower at the end of the year. I've talked about that before. They just don't do well here from spring into summer, but they do great from summer into fall. This is the cattle panel. This will be set up so I can put ag fabric over it or build a poly tunnel. That's kind of an ongoing experiment. Carrots in my area do best if I plant them in fall. These are fall planted carrots. They're going to be ready to harvest shortly. You want to harvest them before they send up the flowers. They are biennials, so it's looking to flower in the second year. So we got carrots and celery, parsley, planted more closely together. That's the celery. That should be perfectly fine. If you're planting things more closely together, you're just going to have to possibly water more, feed more, manage more. But this is more of a raised bed. There's great quality soil in there. I know the bottom is filled with uh, compost and different things. So there's plenty of nutrients in there. This is the container garden I'm working on for the series. So in here, so here's an example. This is all blue and I have it marked down as a late potato planted on 326. Well, as I'm reading last night, it says that all blues are early potatoes. It's really, really confusing. So I had this removed. I had half of this removed. I had the blue potatoes down to about here. And as they grew up the stems, I was going to backfill to get more potato growth. And I said, forget that. I'm tired of this not being able to find what I need. Eventually I will. So I just filled it back over. So I have potatoes here that will send up a long stem and it will naturally just grow potatoes if it is an indeterminate variety as is. But I'm also going to put some early potatoes, some red potatoes, four inches deep right on here and just pack it in. So the early potatoes will be growing in here. The later potato, if that's what it is, will be down here and they will just intermingle. I'm not looking for huge potatoes. I just want a lot of baby potatoes. So I have the great potato experiment going on this year. Closely put together, um, planted, I mean, uh, different sweet peppers right over there on the right side. So we got peppers and potatoes. This whole space has not been filled out yet, but it will. And you can see concentrated stuff over here, over here on my left. And then these are plants I started indoors. We have beets that, golden beets that went on in the ground on 330. I have, they're probably coming up. This is pak choy. Yeah, there's a little one. Pak choy will mature really. Well, you might have noticed the lighting has changed. I'm actually leaving for a flight shortly to Nashville. And some of the video got corrupted. So let me just pick up right where I left off. And actually a good thing, because I realized coming out here now, um, I forgot to put down my iron phosphate which are baited slug pellets. You could use sulfur baited slug pellets or iron phosphate. They work really well. Just scatter them around on the path. You don't need to put them near your plants. That takes care of my snail and slug problem. But I was saying that pak choy or bok choy will sprout up really quick. It's best planted in the ground. Whenever I try and start them in cells, I put them out here. They never fully develop. They flower really early. Going down here, I have endive, on the left, mustard greens at the top. This is all spinach and this is um, bib lettuce all along here. So these are seeds that I started indoors. Wanted to show you the other place I put onions. I put them in here. And one of the biggest fails people have with onions is they just don't water them enough. They take a lot of water. When you're first moving them from your seed trays or you're putting in um, your transplants from wherever you get them. It may look like they don't need a lot of water, but they really need water every other day until the roots are fully established and things get going. The other thing is, is they would love some nitrogen. Any plant that you're putting out now would love nitrogen. So let's transfer over to the rest of the video. Any plant that you put in now will like to have, you know, a drink of nitrogen just to get established and to grow. Your overwintering garlic would also like some of that nitrogen. I don't give nitrogen to radishes. I found that that just seemed to work better for me in my area. This bed are all plants 
that overwintered, they'll be eaten, removed, but they're going to be cleared out come, come really the next week or so. This was the experimental area where same exact crops on both sides, no plastic was put on here plastic was put on here when it would get to a frost temperature and you can just see how much better they're doing. These are put into the ground on March 3rd, again April 7th. And, you know these are growing but the frost and the cold kind of slowed them down. These all look great. So the peas will trellis up. I think these are probably French breakfast radishes they're getting to size you know about another week or so. I am going to do the video finally. Temperatures are right. We have 10 days of 45 plus degree nights, 70 degree days. I can start these towers and I've already started putting in some peppers. So these are going to be a sweet pepper tower but I'm going to be doing that video later today. Let's spin over real quick and you can see where I had the experiment going on with the tomato plants. These weren't functional when it got really cold. I talked about that in the last Friday morning ramblings. Two peppers, just did that video yesterday, into containers, all hot peppers. Again, planted closely together, two plants in one spot. You don't have to find, you know, you don't have to follow the old wisdom where plants need a ton of space. I don't, you know, I don't even think that's true. I don't know where they get that from. I think it's like, you know, people just copied it over and copied and pasted and copied and pasted for generations. You need to have guidelines, like you can't put a tomato plant six inches apart, but you don't have to space them three feet apart. And I think we'll kind of wrap up there. That's everything that I have growing. It gives you some of the ideas of the plants you can get into the ground now in April. May while it's still cold, white frost is still around. That's some overwintering kale, hardneck garlic, strawberries are coming back. Those are all 22 gallon containers. They have bottoms. There's holes pump, uh, punched in there for drainage. So you have a good idea of some of the plants you can start by seed, plants that you can start inside, um, bring outside. For instance, if you put lettuces into the ground now, lettuce seeds into the ground, they could take 10 to 14 days to germinate outside because it's cold. If you germinate them inside, they will start growing and germinate really within five to seven days. You get a little bit of a jump on the season because they start, they germinate more quickly, they get larger, you put them into the ground as the temperatures start going up and you don't have seeds. <clears throat> So these are a lot of the cool weather crops. You can start inside, they'll germinate more quickly than sitting outside when it's cold. Or you can direct seed into the garden now and it'll do really well. So like I said, I'm going to be putting fish emulsion down. That's organic. These are blueberries. They like a little more acidity in the soil. I'm going to use um, miracle Grow acid water soluble fertilizer. It's chemical based. It's not going to hurt my garden. You can use chemical fertilizers here and there if you wish you know, don't overstress about it. But that extra acidity will help out all of my blueberry plants. Hope this gives you some idea of what you might be able to start now in your area. Combination of seeds starting indoors, combination of putting seeds out in the ground. But now is the time to start planting. Thanks so much for watching. And please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.